Maca's Guides. John C. Hey, what's up, guys? Mac here. I thought I would start my year by talking about my most anticipated games of 2016. The rules are pretty simple. You have to be coming out in 2016 with a confirmed date of some sort, and I have to actually think you're going to meet that date, and you have to have some form of gameplay or reliable kind of screenshots that show what your game is actually about. This is a personal list, which undoubtedly a lot of you will disagree with. Feel free to post your top five or whatever you want in the comments down below. I actually do read every single comment of your guys, and I find it super interesting, the different opinions that everyone has. So let me know what your most anticipated game of the year is. Also, it's probably important to mention that I don't actually get like really hyped for games. I made a video a while back about why I think you shouldn't get hyped for games. I always set low expectations and I enjoy gaming much better when I think every game's gonna be absolute crap, and then I'm usually pleasantly surprised. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So in at number 10, I have Cuphead, which many Xbox gamers would probably put a little bit higher. I've got a chance to play this game, and it is quite exciting. It's very unique, very different, and it actually feels very good in your hands. I just don't know if it's necessarily directed at someone like me. The game is composed strictly of boss fights, and it's a very difficult game that'll have a lot of people frustrated but it no doubt has an art style and music style that is unparalleled. This is a game that I personally can't wait to dig deep into and really get a chance to experience from start to finish, so hopefully it works out well. In at number 9 is Crackdown 3, and 100% of my excitement up to this point has been generated by tech demos. I do wish there's been more kind of gameplay shown, a little bit more game mechanics shown, up to this point, we've mostly been shown tech demos, and those have impressed me a lot. It seems that the team is using a lot of cool technologies to attain results that you wouldn't be able to get from one single console. I do see this as the future of gaming, where we use kind of server-based cloud power to power our in-game engines and allow for more destructibility, more physics-generated stuff, and just particles, whatever it is. All that technology lingo out of the way. I think it is a fascinating idea that they're using cloud services to actually generate power in your game. Like I said, I think it's the future of gaming and I'm very excited to see how this technology works out. I'm also excited to see more gameplay mechanics shown in tech demos in the future. Hopefully it comes out and the technology is used to a good potential and then other studios and developers and publishers can gain access to that and use it for themselves to improve gaming as a whole. Next up on the list is Halo Wars 2, and I'm slightly breaking my rule of the game needing a significant amount of gameplay or screenshots. This game is the only game on the list that doesn't have that, but I think there's a lot of safe bets to be made about how this game is going to look and how this game is going to be played, hopefully very similar to Halo Wars 1, the original, but obviously improved. I really enjoyed Halo Wars 1. I thought it was, like, severely underappreciated. At the same time, I think the team's going to have a hard time making Halo Wars 2 different, unique, and actually like revolutionizing or evolving the series from where it was years and years ago. Now I'm not one for speculation, so I'm not gonna make assumptions and say things based on the little information that we do have. All I can say is that I'm personally excited for this to get my hands on it, similar to Halo Wars 1, I think and hope it's gonna be a good game. At the seventh spot, I have Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a game that is different enough from every other game we see non-stop all year that it has to be anticipated for someone like me, who plays all those games and they all start feeling like the exact same game over and over again. I'm excited for Mirror's Edge because it's probably going to be a refreshing break from the monotony of the everyday FPS and action-adventure game. I'm excited for the first-person platforming, which we don't see a lot. The story is going to continue and hopefully get intriguing, and the bright and colorful graphics are always a pleasure to look at. In the next spot, we have Tom Clancy's The Division, and there's a lot of cool things about this game that I think I could really potentially enjoy. I'm sure many people would agree in saying that post-Outbreak Manhattan makes for a very interesting game world. The game actually looks quite nice with the kind of snowfall in the city. The RPG elements inside of a shooter are very intriguing and can hopefully play well into the game's strengths. And I've gotten a chance to play the game, and I do actually enjoy the way it feels. I feel like the biggest challenge for the game is easily going to be trying to meet the expectations of the gaming community considering how long ago this game was announced and the fact that it feels like people have been waiting forever. Next up I have Uncharted 4 A Thief's End made by Naughty Dog which is a studio that has about the best reputation you possibly can which is very well deserved. This is the first Uncharted game in close to five years and they've been working on this game for the better part of three years. It doesn't take a genius to watch some gameplay and realize that this game looks incredible and 
that there's no doubt that Naughty Dog knows what they're doing. It also seems that they've made leaps and bounds with the multiplayer aspects of the game, although that will obviously not be a general focal point for the vast majority of people. The gameplay itself looks incredibly action-packed, story-driven, and cinematic, and they've also added new dialogue options, which could potentially be really cool. And if I was more into action-adventure games as a whole, I'm sure this would place even higher on my list. And last but not least, the sooner this game comes out, the sooner we hear about The Last of Us 2. In at the number 4 spot, I have Gears of War 4, aka Gears 4. Now, I was incredibly underwhelmed with the gameplay they showed at E3 2015. I've already shared my thoughts about that gameplay multiple times. I thought it was too dark in color and contrast, not in atmosphere, and I think that they could have shown something a lot better, and something that would have been a lot better received by the gaming community. So we haven't seen a proper Gears of War since 2011, let's pretend Gears of War Judgment never happened, and Gears of War Ultimate Edition was obviously just a remaster. In my opinion, it is just the right time for new Gears of War, also on the next generation, I'm gonna start calling it the current generation of consoles. Either way, I think there's a lot of potential here. My main concerns about Gears 4, other than the graphical complaints I've already had, is that the team is able to build a connection between the players and the characters in the game, and that they include a lot more features than Gears of War Ultimate Edition, which I thought lacked a lot. I do have really high hopes that this game is going to be excellent from a gameplay and gameplay mechanic standpoint, however. Next up on my list is Horizon Zero Dawn, and if there is one thing I've learned by playing video games for a very long time, it's that I shouldn't let Guerrilla Games trick me with pretty graphics and pre-release trailers. They've actually become a little bit notorious for releasing highly anticipated games to just okay reception. With that being said, you can't deny that Horizon Zero Dawn looks impressive and like quite a special game. So graphically the game is incredible, that's a no-brainer, but there's also a lot of really cool gameplay mechanics and different things that they've included in the game that make it very interesting to me. For one, the concept of tribal combat against dino robots is super intriguing, and on top of that you have a lot of cool equipment and a lot of cool AI tactics and abilities that you can use to help you in the battlefield. There's also RPG elements and crafting which could potentially also be really cool. Now I honestly do think that this game has the potential to be one of the best games we're going to play in a very long time, but with that being said, I do think the team is going to struggle with building an open world environment that has stuff to do, and that keeps players engaged. In 2015, we saw a ton of games with really cool concepts that ultimately failed on delivering a good game. Obviously, I hope that this is not one of them, but I am a little bit fearful of it. With that being said, I hope that they can string the great graphics and the great gameplay mechanics together into a cohesive package that plays well from beginning to end and doesn't drag on or leave players wanting more. But we'll just have to wait and see. Number two on my list is Hitman, and it's been a good three and a half years since the last Hitman, and almost ten years since the last proper Hitman when we had Hitman Blood Money. If you followed me on online forums for a very long time, you may have noticed that I've actually used the Hitman guy as my avatar on many places on the internet for the better part of 10 years. I'm an absolute huge fan of the series, and this game is looking to do a lot of things right. So even though I don't really like action-adventure games, stealth games have been easily one of my favorite genres since I was a child, growing up on games like Hitman, Metal Gear, and Splinter Cell. I do hope that this game can return to the previous open-world, do-what-you-want style that older Hitman games did have. And honestly, my main concerns come with Square Enix trying to cut corners before launch, possibly putting too much of a focus on online gameplay and contract type stuff, or relying too heavily on features being added through a season's pass. Hopefully that's all avoided and I can just get the Hitman game that I've wanted for years. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that I play a lot of games, and a lot of games kind of cluster into that average tier of games and it becomes one giant mess of meh. It also shouldn't come as a surprise that I hold a big value onto uniqueness when I'm looking at games in the future. And that's the main reason that I decided that my most anticipated game was Quantum Break. So Quantum Break really impressed me because of how far it decided to think outside the box. I've actually seen some gameplay that I don't even know if I'm still allowed to talk about that really impressed me earlier on in 2015. But the concepts that are in this game are taking the idea of video games and flipping them upside down. This game takes the idea of having a central focus point, in this case time travel and manipulation, and forming game mechanics around that 
that make sense and are unique, but also actually help the game. So time and gravity manipulation aren't new in video games by any means, and the idea of how the player actually acquires their abilities is kind of generic, but at the same time the game also includes a TV show based on the game that players can watch as they progress through it. So the episodes of these TV shows will be included on the disc and players will be prompted to watch them during certain parts of the game, and I hope that this helps players kind of see both perspectives of the story and generates a unique experience in that way. Added to that is the fact that they're using notable actors, which always helps as well. So I've discussed what I think the challenges for most of the games on this list are, and I think for this game, the biggest and most obvious challenge will be replayability. If the gameplay experience is extremely streamlined and linear, there will be very little reason to revisit a lot of the game. Hopefully there's a lot of big open battle areas at the least where players can have fun and experience the game in different ways. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my analysis about my anticipated games, why I'm anticipating them, and why I think they might not be as good as some people think. In case you were wondering, two games didn't make the list, but were very close, and those were For Honor and The Last Guardian. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to share your thoughts down below. Shout out to Heron Giggles, as well as all of these awesome people on Patreon for supporting the channel. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Peace!